Hey everybody, Carl Schuf from Snorkel.tv here. Who took my coffee? Oh, here it is. Sorry about that. All right, listen, we're going to do something really fun today. We got this 3D card flipper that's interactive, meaning that we can flip from front to back, and it's all seamless and beautifully wonderful. And the reason why I perform so well is, of course, because we're using GreenSock Tween Max and Timeline Max to control everything. All right. Um, what I want to do is show you first how this would be built on the flash timeline so that we have an understanding of exactly what we have to do programmatically. So here I have this timeline file built where I have some motion tweens and you'll see in the layer called front that I can pretty much scrub through and you'll see this card spinning until it gets to a rotation Y of 90 degrees. And there's this little skinny edge of the card that we're seeing right here. And I'm going to hide the back layer real quick. And in order to get rid of that skinny edge, I have a blank keyframe here. So the first thing the front of the card needs to do is to spin to 90 and then hide itself. Once that happens, the back of the card is going to start with a rotation Y of negative 90 and then spin out to zero. So if I just scrub this timeline back and forth, this is the effect that I want to get with ActionScript. So let's jump into my start file and we'll just experiment a little bit with uh, some code. Now I want to point out that we're doing something just a little bit differently here and instead of having the front and the back in different layers on the main timeline, I have this thing here called Flipper. And inside of Flipper, it's a movie clip that has a front and a back. So the advantage here is that I can put this card wherever I want on the stage and I'm just moving the front and the back as once and it just keeps things a little bit more modular. Now let's go into my actions and let's take a look at what we have here. I'm importing the necessary green sock classes. Um, I'll put some stuff here in a minute. Um, I'm setting a speed at which each card should flip and I also have a timeline max instance set up. Okay, that's all ready for me to append some tweens to. Now the first thing I want to do is take that front of the card and spin it to a rotation Y of 90. So I'm just going to paste in some code to avoid typos um, right here. I'm going to tell that timeline called TL that we're going to append a tween max to, and we're going to tell the front face of the flipper, flipper.front, that over a period of 0.5 seconds, we're going to change your rotation Y to 90, and we're not going to use any easing at all. Uh, Tween Max has a built-in default ease of a quad ease out, but to get the smoothest flip, I want no easing at all, so we're going to use none. That will overwrite the default tweening um, easing. There's other ways of doing it, but right now that's cool enough. So, here's what happened. I missed it too. The front of that card does in fact flip to 90 degrees and we're just seeing the thin edge. Now there's a few things wrong here. A, I don't want to see the back of the card yet. And B, I don't want to see this thin edge of the front. I'm going to set my tweens to uh, slow-mo by, you know what, right now I can just change the flip speed to be two seconds. I could also change the time scale on the timeline, but that works fine right now. And now you'll see in slow motion what's happening. The card flips and we get stuck with this thin edge. Well, I want to show you a great trick, which I just learned personally. Um, what I would have done previously to this great trick is I would have set up either a new tween right after this one that instantly sets the alpha or the visibility of that front clip to zero or visible to false, or I would have even had a callback function on complete that would handle making that edge hidden. But what I've learned recently is that there is a visible plugin that is available and automatically activated in Tween Max where I can say when this tween has completed, automatically set its visible to false. All right, I don't have to do anything else. So now you'll see that once that card gets to 90, it disappears. I can't see it at all. So I'm not stuck with that edge right there. Now we have the issue of the back of the card. I don't want to see it. And I also want to set it up so that when it starts tweening, it has spun 
its rotation y property to negative 90. Okay, so I'm going to sort of initialize this card where I want it to be when I start doing my tweens. So we have some stuff we're going to paste in here. And right where I have my start values, I'm just telling the back, hey, rotate so that I'm just seeing your skinny little edge there along the uh, y, rotation y property. And also set your alpha to zero so I don't see you. So now, no more ladybug, and I just see the front of that card spinning. Now, as soon as I get to this point, as soon as the visibility of that front gets killed, I want to be able to see the back of the card. So I'm going to set up a tween that's going to, excuse me, bring the, visib the alpha of that card back to one. So this is the back. Remember, we're starting at an alpha of zero. And now I'm going to say, hey, let's add a new tween to my timeline that takes the back of the card and instantly, no duration here, is going to set the alpha to one. Now there's a little catch here. You'll see that it does in fact work because now we're seeing that edge there. But as this plays, since that tween has no duration at all, it renders instantly. So you can see already from the beginning that that card is sitting there all skinny. And I don't want to see those top and bottom edges there, okay? Don't want to see that at all. So there's a little trick when using tweens that have a zero second duration. To prevent them from rendering right away, we're going to say, let's add a new property called immediate render, we're going to say false. And now we don't see any skinny edge there. And when I get to the end, what I'm seeing here, you see the green of the leaf and the red of that ladybug. That's actually the back of the card at a rotation Y of negative 90, getting ready to spin on its way in. So we're doing this all step by step. And what we literally have accomplished already is again, the front of the card spinning to 90. And then the front of the card, you see that rainbow there? gets hidden and we're swapping in the ladybug, which is the back of the card. And the last step here is to make the ladybug spin and then we see it completely. So we have a tween already ready to go with that. And we're gonna flip the back in like so. I'm just going to, that's my done file and I'm not cheating. So here, once we can see the back of the card by bringing its alpha up to one, we're gonna flip it to a rotation Y of zero and use no easing. So here we go. This is gonna be the whole timeline playing in super slow-mo. That swap from front to back happens absolutely seamlessly. And now that you can see that happening, I'm just gonna take my flip speed and let's crank this to uh, 0.5 seconds. And now we have a really smooth flip. Now I don't want the flip to play automatically I want to control it with my buttons. So what I'm going to do is pause the timeline when it begins. So when I construct the timeline, paused is one of the properties that we can throw in. So I'm going to say, hey, let's set paused equal to true. And that means it won't play. So now it stays stuck here. And now I want to program these buttons so that when I click back, I see the back of the card. When I click on front, I see the front of the card. So let's put these buttons up. I'm going to close the Swift. And let me just show you that these little guys here are called front button and I have back button. I'm going to just go to my actions and do some very simple button code. I'm going to tell the front button to call the show front function. The back button will do show back. Now when I want to see the front of the card, this is something new that I don't think I've done with you guys. I'm going to tell the timeline to tween to a specific point in time. Well, I want to go to the beginning of my timeline. So that's going to be a time value of zero. You can also put in a label if you're using them in your timeline, but I have a whole big thing planned on add label later on. And for the back button, I need to go to the end of the timeline. I want to tween to the end of the timeline and I may not know off the top of my head how long this timeline is going to take. You know, I could add up 0.5 plus 0 plus 0.5. It's going to take about a second. 
but I'm just going to pass in the duration of the timeline. Once all these tweens are appended, Timeline Max knows how long this timeline is. So I'm just going to say, hey, the way of saying go to the end or tween to the end is I'm just going to pass in the duration, which is the total time of the timeline, into the tween to function. And now we have awesome navigation. We can just go back and front. So when I click on back, we're saying, hey, tween to or literally play to the end time and when I hit front I'm saying go to a time of zero and this thing is literally bulletproof it works flawlessly looks beautiful and uh, it's all thanks to a little bit of timeline max action uh, in closing all I gotta say is you know what sometimes it really helps to build something out on the timeline and to analyze it step by step you can figure out exactly what you need to say with ActionScript by actually building on the timeline first. And then when it comes time to coding it, you know, we've pretty much figured out there are just three main things that have to happen. And along the way, you know, I think learning about visible false or the visible plugin is incredibly helpful in immediate render. You always want to use that, I'd say 99% of the time, if you have a tween with a duration of zero. So uh, that's it, guys. If I don't see you before uh, the 25th, Merry Christmas and happy whatever other holidays you may have. Uh, but really, enjoy this, and uh, maybe you can build something for your families using this cool effect. All right, see you guys around. Thank you.